Yeah, good morning YouTube, this is Seb Shaw from SNS Loft. Uh, today we're here at uh, Jim Johnson's uh, uh, in Willenhall, uh, West Midlands. And uh, we're going to take you on a very quick tour of uh, Jim's Lofts. Now here's the man himself. So Jimmy, you lead the way and show us around your loft, mate. We'll leave those of it because... Uh, yeah, we'll leave them to, for later. We'll leave them for later, is it? Because... Uh, the uh, Paul, he likes the, uh, the light pigeon. Right. Which he started with just three pair. Mm -hmm. And he's just spread out to those. Uh, Paul's... Right. Paul, come here. Right, well, here's Paul. Hello, Paul. Hello, Paul. How are you, mate? You all right? And uh, like I say, I ain't particularly bothered about the light birds. Right. Paul was interested about six years ago now. And within six years, he'd be trying to fly a kit of pigeons. No success because of the orc. Right. And he keeps trying and trying. But this is what Paul's bred out of bronzes and checkers. Right. Because I often get a, one or two bronzes. Hmm. So he just paired these all back into each other. And they've cut, as you can see, they've come a bit lighter. Yes, they have some, yeah. yeah. Oh, here comes another one. So that's his little play shed. This is the play shed for Paul. <laughs> Brilliant. Excellent, excellent. Oh, lovely. So if we want to go in and look at some uh, yeah. the old type blue chick to pigeons that originally come from Wilf Lovett himself. Yeah, okay. Through Albert Archer. Right, right, well, Most of these birds was bred through one of the checker cocks, blue chick cock that Wilf Lovett flew 20 hours. Right. And that's my family. And these are the direct descendants of that? Yes. Right, excellent. And pigeons that I flew myself, 18, 19 and 20 hours, all mixed in. Excellent, excellent, excellent. You can see the sub noise pale blues. Yeah. The blue checkers came, oh, many years ago. I only bred one, now I get lots of them. Hmm. But I'm not particularly bothered, because but This is a hen, I would take it. Yeah, yeah. She looks lovely, doesn't she? And you just, uh, you're flying this these days, are you flying these at all? Well, these. I tried seven out. Right. And I lost five blue checkers. Right. And I only got two back. They're okay while well, you're just breaking them, and they all can't see them. They're here, right. there, and everywhere. But the minute they get together, they go up nice and tight. Right. You can get away with it about once. The second time, it's all over. All right. So this is this is your flying section, right? Yes. So you've got what 15, 15 flying boxes, is it? Yep. And There'll be fifteen there. Yeah. And these big boxes over here. Right. Are for when I take the young birds away and wean them off. All right. So these are the weaning cages, the weaning yeah, boxes. Yeah. All right. Okay. Okay. And it, this is where you keep your corn and all that. Yeah. Brilliant. 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 I used to wean them off in here because there right. was twenty odd boxes, single boxes in there. Yeah. But Getting old, you don't want to bend down there. To no, I take it, yeah, I take it, you're right. Okay, these were the older ones, right, yeah. fair enough. Well, my stock ends will go in there after. Right, okay, when you separate them later. Yeah. All yeah. right, right. Mm. Right, so that's it, you've got no youngsters whatsoever in there now, in the, the meaning side. I'll lose them out there, straight yeah. through the window. And then we go into the flight. Yeah, so as I can have a good look round, see where they are. Yeah, brilliant. Then I train them to come through there into the, the big boxes. Right. And once I think they're old enough, right. and they're starting to fly, I'll wait, put them into single boxes and feed them separate. Right, right, right. Okay, then the feed up begins. Well, they don't get no feed up. <laughs> <laughs> right. You know what they're saying? Through the bellies to the brain. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. And you've got to keep them under your control. Yeah. Let them do what they want to do. Spot on, sir. Spot on. And it's best to learn them everything as I'm young. Mm. So as I remember. So how does uh, so that, I mean? So you got a pulley system here, have you? Well, I should have another string on the top. Right. I use the old stick. Right. Put it in there. Put the 
Right. Sure before, I don't know. <laughs> right, 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 right. Get you, get you, get you. And then Very convenient. Control. Yes. Like the same the rules. There must be, the birds must be under your control within the element. Absolutely. So, put them in there, the under control. Brilliant. Get them Brilliant. in, check the rings. Check them out, check them in. Check them in, check them out, check them in. Absolutely. Absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. Right, brilliant, brilliant. And so where does the magic happen? Where's the breeding loft? The magic happens in there. Hey, excellent. Oh, brilliant, look at that. Oh, better get in here. Excellent. Oh, look at that, that's so beautiful, bro. Yeah, look at that. that. How old is that pigeon, Jim? It's only last year's. I said to myself, I will shift all the old stock, which was eight and ten years old. Right. I started fresh this year. Yeah, yeah. Sixteen birds. You may want to tell me more about it if you want to come inside and just point out the pairs to me and uh, any sort of uh, history in, uh, to them, please. Well, really, they're all through, like I say, yeah. 18, 19, and 20 birds. Right. And the great grandfather to them looked similar to that bear. Right. Blue, I, I, blue, I, I, blue that chick. is really nice, you know. Well, honestly, as soon as I saw it, I absolutely thought, I thought you must be one of these. There we go. There and go. he's friendly as well. Yeah, they're all friendly. Yeah, 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 yeah. Good. It's really, really like them. So these are all the cockbirds here, right? And it's, it's, it's all, a couple of youngsters as well, isn't they're it? They're all last year's birds I am breeding off at the Right. Moment. So what do you do with the older ones, the ones which are older at, uh, say, is it silver? Yeah. It's really nice. Silver in. Right, okay. Right, brilliant, brilliant. Nice pair of blues on the top there. Yeah, that's that's really nice, isn't it? Yeah. We've got the two blue youngsters in there are off there. Off these? Yeah. You, you like to show it to me? Which one are they? Let's get over there. He's one. Alright, excellent. Yeah. And the other one's there. The second bed. Right, there we go. Really, really nice. They're credits to you, sir. They are absolutely credits to you. And, uh, right. As you can see, I do, do yeah. breed one or two bronzes. Right. They're really, really, really nice. The first time I've seen your birds, to be honest. That's the first time I've seen them. And. They're absolutely... Well, you shouldn't find any purer, because I've had them nearly 40 years now. Mm. They're not, um, they're not sitting eggs at the minute. They, sh they should have been parted over three weeks ago. Right. I don't like late breaks, really. Really? No. Uh, a good idea for these... Right. Is in the winter... Uh -huh. Those double up. Yeah. As the single box system. Think, oh, excellent. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then if I want to pair them up, mm -hmm. the cocks dominator box. So mm -hmm. If I want an end, I'll put the end in there and the top will, and Then when they get fun mm. to pair it up, I just open it up and let them have all the box. Brilliant. And when Brilliant. they are paired up, when mm. I get the ball in, that comes back. I swear the shit. Just like that. Superb. And so I see you've got four, four, eight. Seven. Eight, eight, seven, is it? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. I normally only keep six pair. Right, right, right. So you, you've got six breeding pairs then, is it, at any one yeah, time? I've got seven at the minute. Okay, so eight boxes you've got, that's what I was looking yeah, for. Yeah, just in case I want to put another yeah. pair together. But you'll always put seven. How many rounds we're looking at, Percy? Uh, per Three per of the season? most. Three of the most? Yeah. Right, okay, and how how many would you be, uh, what do you call it, uh, well, serving to the peri? To the what? To the peregrine. How many, how, what, are, what are your losses? Too many. Yeah, I think that's a story with everyone, Too isn't many. it? That's a story with everyone. I mean, years ago, out the six pair, I could bring 30. Right. Breaking in, perhaps losses of 10. Right. I'd sell 10 and keep 10 for flying. Right, But it's okay. not that easy today. No, it's not. No, no, there's a lot. I haven't flown properly now for, for about 10 years, so... Right. So are you actively still flying, or are you just flying for pleasure? I keep trying. Right, 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 right. But the, 
It's only feeding the pedigree. It's true. It's true. Yeah, as soon as you start building some times up, yeah. you start getting hit. Yeah. Yeah. So I can understand that. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, it is. It is like going to the sweet shop for it. Yeah. yeah, yeah it's, it's, oh, it's ideal here. Yeah. But uh, they get up too high, really. Big yeah. birds. Right, right, yeah. right, right. So they, these are, what would you say, they are mid-range or high flyers? What would you say? How old is this guy? Oh dear. Oh dear. Oh dear. Yes. All right, let me just quickly get these beauties in here. Right, so these are some of the youngins of uh, Jimmy Johnson and some uh, beautiful specimen of birds here. This, guys, look, this is the first time I'm actually seeing them too. And I am absolutely surprised. I really am. And, oh, look at that cockwood. Could you tell me more about that one over there, sitting in the middle? Yeah, that really looks nice. That one that's been there. Oh, about, it's yeah. a, the blue cup. Yeah. Yeah yeah yeah, 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 yeah. There again, if you look at them, yeah. they got a not too big beak. Nice no, let's have a look. Nice head. Let's have a look. Let's have a look at that. Yeah, and what, what sort of what colour eyes do they throw back? Do they vary in eye colour? No, they don't vary, they stop as they are. A red pink. I don't like bull eye. Right. I don't like yellow eye. Right. That's that's proper colour of a tipler eye, I would say. Right. See, what put me on to this? So we're looking at pearl eye. Are we? Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, we're looking at pearl eye. Right. Yeah, that's the short just beak. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Not yeah, too yeah, long. Yeah. They're not too long in the leg. So do they have colour variations as well? I can see like you, you. I mean, would the checkers go a bit lighter on the beak, and would they? Uh, would the blues go darker on the beak? The, the beak itself is always dark. Right. But the wattles on the top the are always are right. white. Right, okay. Right. Yeah. Yeah, but I mean, um, that's. That, yeah, wattles. We can see the wattles as well. So basically, so in, because you see, like, you've got, uh, we've got. I've got Shannons. And they're certain that we'll have a darker beak. The other ones will have a lighter beak. So it's the badges, isn't it? Some badges it is the badges. Yeah, 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 yeah. And yeah, the blue yeah. ones will be darker. Big darker. It's yeah. true. It's true. Yeah. It's true. It's true. See, got a nice round like an apple at the front, all the muscle. Yeah, yeah, I can see nice that. Short in the leg. Absolutely, it's a V shape, isn't it? Round. Can we, can we, can we say, can we summarise it as V shape? What the bird itself? The bird itself. The tapers. To tapers. Yeah, yeah, yeah because yeah, that's what yeah, I'm looking yeah. over there, and yeah. I'm actually. Uh, quite. And look at that silver. Could you tell me more about that silver over there? Is that there? There. That's at that corner. In that corner. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A little silver end. Yeah, See yeah. See it? A bit. The colour. I don't know if it's the colour of the bed that brings the colour in the beak. Right. Because that's a silver and it's a bit lighter. You get me? So that's what yeah, I was referring the dark to. Dark blues have got dark beaks. Yeah, yeah. This is what I, this is what I picked up straight away when I came in and looked at it. Look at the checker as well. Here on the right, on the right, third on the right. Can yep. you see it? Can you see it? Yeah, a little clay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I, I, I just... Like, I like to pair a clay, uh, a silver as we call it. Yeah. To a blue. Yeah, and what's the throwback? Anything or...? Blues and silver. Silvers, okay, yeah. okay. Yeah. Right. But really, really, that, honestly, I'm, 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 I wasn't expecting to be taken back by your birds, honestly. Oh. It was, it was, it's really, really, because what I'm trying to do at the moment is, uh, at my loft, uh, it's. Uh, I'm. I'm trying to like uh, just concentrate on uh, what Harry gave me. Yeah. And I was going to just, just to just basically. Well, if your fly badge is all white wings, you'll see like more or less on any sky of a night. Mm. But if it, if you're flying blues, you have a job to find them. Mm. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. You have to wait for them to cross a cloud or something. Yes. Whereas if they're up in the blue, yeah, you have a right job finding them. A blue on a nice sky. On a, yeah, you can't. You're not going to do that. Uh, are you? Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Really. That's really. what I find anyway. Hmm. That one. Yep. Clay silver. Yep. Is out the bronze. Right. And uh, a checkered, a clay checkered. Similar to this bird. Yeah, here. Yeah. There we go. No, that's the youngster. Where are we looking at? Where's he gone? Might be here somewhere down at, at, at the bottom. Well, it'll be similar to this one anyway. Right, so let's have a look. Yeah? A bronze and one like that and throw a clay silver. Mm. And this is what they throw back, they don't throw back any other mutation or anything like No, that. no white wings, no, no, nothing. no, no, nothing. I think okay, okay, a okay. white wing, you know, I love it. Right, okay, okay.
Um, so we're interested, I think, in terms of Paul's birds. They would be, they be, they've got similar. They're, they're different throwback, haven't they? Yeah, yeah. they've got totally different if you throwback. Put light to light. Yeah. If you put light to light, they'll get lighter. Right, right. Because that's what I I saw. Uh, I think there were about three, 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 uh, three birds. It uh, Davy had some as well. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I actually seen a yellow in Albert's loft. That's Albert's art still. He yeah. used to breed them for Wilf time to time. Yeah. And um, he had a yellow in and it took me twenty five years to breed one yellow. Oh. And that's in Paul's shed, yellow model. I think I've probably seen one at Davies, that's probably off him, off that bird. Could be. It could be off that bird because yeah. I've seen it's one at Davies. Yeah. Originally I only had three pair mm. and I had a, an old Lloyd Print ten, nineteen seventy. Mm -hmm. And a uh, 1975 bronze model, and then was direct off Albert. Right, right. This on the left would be. Let's just have a look. Well, these are dropper shed. Yep. Yeah. Always Excellent. keep them hungry. Yes. To play back as a forward, otherwise you won't get your triplers down. So what what strain? Any particular strain? No, 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 no. Them are just licorice or sort droppers. Right. As long as they can I be call spotted them droppers in, in the dark. Droppers and tumblers. The tumblers, yeah. But I've been to uh, trying to breed right. a few like that, uh -huh. and then we're across Magpie and uh, a Nectar. Right. There's about six in there now, and right. I want to I want to try and breed them because they come out similar to a, a ghost badge. Right, 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 right. But uh, the money droppers keep your droppers hungry always. Keep them hungry. That's 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 that, that's, the, that's the common denominator. And, uh, that's what they've got to get. They've got to be really hungry and play because you want them tipplers down. Of course, I mean, you did the signaling in, isn't it? So you need that strong signal. Yeah. That signal needs to be very strong. The Absolutely. same with the tipplers. They've yeah. got to get used to when the droppers come out, it's time mm. to come down. And if you're flying in the dark, you've got to get used to them lights coming on. Mm. And you've got to have your droppers hungry to play in the dark. Sure, 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 Obviously. Sure. Yes, indeed. Yes. Yeah. Indeed. So say, to the brain, it's through there. So uh, yes, it is. It is. It all yeah. Absolutely, yeah. fully agree with that. And uh, in terms of your uh, the light for the uh, your dark system or the dark training, so I only see that light over there. So and uh, there's one over there, and I think it's yep, that's there. And so is it down cast the shadow because there. it could be frightened as a round shadow. Of course, yeah. Yes, 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 so yes, yes. Do away with the shadows. Hmm. Uh, and any trouble with the neighbours uh, or a light? No, or something like no, that? no. I've been here. Well, I've been here 40 years plus now. I've never had any trouble with the neighbours. Mm -hmm. Well, far enough away from the house, 75 yet. Yeah. yeah, you are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely, yeah. definitely. And if you're breaking youngsters in, I only give them two chances. If they drop on the roof, they don't get another chance. Right. Where do they go? Yes, the yeah. in the in the green bin. Yes, yes. No, it's true. No, you got to you got you to got have to be discipline. To be going. Yes. Yeah. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. What I tend to do is <coughs> sometimes I put them in the shell cages on the floor. Right. Which are, yes. Yeah. Because what you'll find with some beds is when you open that and they come out. It's like as if the top of the shed is like red hot and they just come out and touch it, gone. Mm. So, I think if I lose them out from there, they're already on the floor. The only place next door to that is the shed. Right. I better look and I'm hungry. With them. If I'm really hungry, I'll come off the floor. So, I don't mind leaving them out with the droppers. You've got all the rules out mad with the droppers, obviously. Mm -hmm. When you're first breaking them in, and then you just get the droppers away and let them have a go on their own. But as soon as the droppers come out, they should now start to come down and fill. Uh, same in the dark, just playing back to the phones for a bit in the right. dark. So just just basically just getting them custom. Yes. Custom to the whole whole shenanigans routine. of the routine. It is, it is, yes, it is. Just it is. all routine, that's all it, it is. It is, it is, it is, it is, it is. Brilliant. Brilliant. Right. I mean some some of the uh, some of the prints, like the uses, they're that wild, they just come out, push, go. Hmm. I've seen this happen. So well, especially Tommy's birds. <laughs> <laughs> he was saying, I mean, Tommy was kept, most of the time he had to stay up all night. Yeah. 
and the following morning, about eight-ish or so, the birds used to drop. Are you going to show me into your diplomas? Um, we, we used to have a fly between an English club or all of England and the Germans. Right. And 99. That's 99, that's 99, 99. as well. That's 16 out of four. Out of four. And that, that is 99 is 41. Yeah. That was an old bird, and I'm sure that was a young bird. Uh, yeah. yeah. If, the, if the Worcester put the date on... They, they, they didn't put a date on it, did they? So they put... It's 99, so... Yeah, that's a long day. Yeah. International young bird fly, I think. Yeah. Yeah. So... I put them on as well. Right, these are the NTU ones as well then. Yeah, there's yeah. NTU. Yeah, we would like to see some of them, definitely. And what I did, once upon a time, yeah. I just picked a fly out. Yeah. National record of achievement. Superb, superb. Alright, there we go. There I'll we go. Put them on a lighter. Yeah. Stick them to the door. Yeah, I would do. And there we go. Right. Okay. Right. These are from. This is 9, 21st of June, nineteen eighty-one, and that was that was third position with nineteen hours ten. That's back back then. Yes, that yeah. was back then. Now the, you be you be winning the sort of the, the, you be the first national with that sort of time nowadays, isn't it? But it's only because the orc. I mean, yeah. When I flew then. Hmm. I was flying against three to four hundred Pe yeah, people. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's correct. Yeah. Now the orc spoiled it. Right. And it's also spoiled it for the uh, the farmers because the farmers sell corn to the pet shop. The pet shop lose. We have clay bowls made. Yeah. So who's going to met them? If yeah. Not really, I mean, there's a lot of people wrapping up. Yeah. So there's a lot of people losing a lot of money. Yeah. This is from 1985. This is down 20 hours, one minute. And this is from 1980, 25th of May, 1980, on my right. And that's uh, 17 hours, 52. Uh, this is signed by Ken Potts, isn't it? Yeah. And um, this is signed by Paul Bowden. I just want to see... He's the chairman of the NTU at the yeah. time. And this is by uh, Jay Cullen. Johnny Cullen. Yep. And this is Bowden as well. All right, you want to you want to go through and take me through those diplomas, mate? Well, yeah, that's 20, 20 hours. Oh, I always wanted my name on the long day cup. Right. And when I done twenty hours one, mm. uh, Mr. Rosebottom mm -hmm. in Ireland done twenty hours two. Oh dear! Losing it by one, one minute. minute, sixty seconds. That's nineteen eighty. 1752. Yeah. What's he said? Novice. Novice, yes. Then there was. Yeah, 90, that's your first fly then, as a novice. Yeah. Wow. 1980, that's no, 2015. One, one of them I joined in 79. Right, 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 right. And right. I was always fourth. Right. <laughs> this is second. And that was the second. Excellent. And then I was 1910. 1910, that's the first, that's in 1981. Yeah. And these are Will Fulbright's yeah. kit at 20 hours. The first person to do 20 hours. Mm. And it took from 1912 to 1963, is it? Yeah, it's 63, June, June 22nd. That's 63, June's, yeah. To do 20 hours. 20 hours, yeah. That's some achievement. That's a long day flying 82. He was second with 18 hours 40 minutes. So right, that is, that's, ben that's ben Bentley West, isn't it? Yeah, that was the club I was in. Yeah. 18. Yeah, and that's Bentley West again. 1913. Yeah. And the third. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, these are again Bentley West. With Floyd, mate. Hmm. We won it that time. 18, 1848, 20 or 1 again. 85. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's uh yeah. Right, old hall. Invitation tip of the club. 
Olympics 1987 floor, you've done 18 hours there, 1840, 1854. Yeah, that's all, yeah, 16, 16 plus hours there. Brilliant. That was the uh, that was, Ball, yeah. and then was uh, the kit that Colin Bristow played. Yeah. And he broke the record with uh, yeah, 20, that, hours. 20, yeah, 20 hours, 12 minutes on 19th of June, 1994. That's his, that was uh, that's the Colin Bristow's kit of pigeons at the time. See, if you break the record, you have your birds put off. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. All clubs do that, I think. Yeah. There's more than one. There's flowers, there's flowers, there's about four. There's 16 yeah. four. We've got to be a young bird. Yeah, 16 and four. That's 1999. National Chipper Union Diplomas. Yeah, that's 1941, that's in 99. That's Youngbird. Right, Jim, for now, uh, for some commonly asked uh, questions uh, you, you know, about the birds, and I'm sure the, uh, the Tipler folk across the globe uh, would really be interested to know some of these. Uh, how did you become associated with Tiplers, and how long has it been? Oh, well, I've had pigeons. It's been 10 or 11 back in the 50s. Mm -hmm. And I used to have kits and muffies. And when I first came here, I had a kit and muffies. And then I was watching one or two. And I was never interested in races and tippers, but I, I did. Quite some years ago, I, I'll catch two. And the flu noise. Mm -hmm. And then I've been watching the skies around here for years, and one or two Bentley. And my mate Clark, he, he had soup. And uh, he said there was, nah, no nah, good, you're going to kill him. But that was bred out of Alberts. Right. So I had them, and I started, and then meeting one or two of the guys, went and seen Albert, and I had some off Albert. And that's how it all started, really. And then the first club I ever joined was uh, William Old Club in 1979. The shed's been up since 1978, believe it or not, that wow. shed. And I've been flying pigeons out, out of that shed since 1978. And that's some time, that's a mystery. That's a mystery. So, I got involved and I thought, well, oh no, I'm going to tricks so off. I can have a little go at that. Hmm. But I done it in 1959. I missed the novice cup. In them days, it was either two old and one young, whichever three was the oldest times. So only three flies in the novice cup on. Oh, no, okay. And I'll miss that mm. by a few minutes. The person who you're going to see next, he won it. <laughs> okay, Paul. Paul. Paul Green. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so uh, you do you do 959, you're still a novice. Mm. You meet, when, if you've done 10 hours and a bit, you want a novice no more. Mm. Then you're up into the big league and you've got to. The big boys. Right, yeah. The big boys. Back yeah. in the day, it yeah. was. A lot of them were about. Yeah. yeah. Like Jack and Paul and yeah, yeah, yeah. Russell, Billy Newman. So what, what 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 was it like flying? I mean, knowing that you were competing with those names. Oh well, you you just got to try your best. And mm. The thing is, if if something don't work, you have to alter it and get it to suit. I mean, some birds like the flat, and other birds like the lift off the wind and things like this. And mm. it's all things that you got to learn. Mm. Down here, I've been quite happy with my lobbies, but they get too high, and they're all bait really. Mm -hmm. yeah, right, right. Yeah, mm. so that's how I started, and it was uh, Roy Down, our club secretary there, and a damn good secretary. Kent was here already in, and Tex was already in. I think it started in 1976, mm -hmm. and I joined in 1979. Brilliant, brilliant. Now, how did you acquire tipplers and from who did you get the tipplers? Well, I had a couple of my well, mate, Cliff, but I took them ring numbers and I went straight back to Albert to confirm mm. that what I got was Lovitz. I had some of Albert himself. Who used to, like I say, used to breed a few for Wilf Lovitz. Did you have any other birds in your loft at any time that had Bill's rims on? Did I? Did you have any birds at any time in the loft had 
which had Wills. Uh, not Wills, oh, not Wills. But Alberts. Yeah. Alberts, yeah. 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 So they were directly, obviously, from. Yeah. 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 Fire at Albert. Right. Brilliant. And uh, the, the, I mean, obviously, this is a tricky part. A lot of losses are sort of uh, suffered by, tip, uh, tip, you know, fences, a tip of them. Uh, so, if I was to ask you, and for the obviously for the uh, for the season as well as the novice uh, uh, tipperman out there, uh, what's the best way, and how do you actually settle your tippers? Well, when I first part them, these are still young. Mm -hmm. I still give them best cool. Right. And then I start weaning them off a bit at a time, from the best to what I, I've always used is just wheat and barley. Hmm. Right. Is that when you're weaning them off? When I finish weaning them off, ah, right, right. I'll get them down to wheat and barley. Yeah. 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 And believe it or not, I've never had to starve one of those to break of the wheat. Hmm. I mean, some people, even the wheat, without wheat, wheat uh, without water and food. But not with them, I could give them just a spoonful, say, the night before, and I'd have them out the next day. Because mm. they've they got some brains. Always, I don't give up on them because anybody who's flying chipplers, don't give up on them, but always look for them about two hours before dark mm -hmm. because they will come over and show. And if you're not there, then you have miss the opportunity. But nine times out of ten, you'll always see them the next day. I've come, got up early and they've been on the ship mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. they've never. So, in your opinion, so what are the most important uh, traits that you look for when you select a kit? Well, you'll see them standing there, you'll see which is the best. They'll mm. be there. Right. I'll be alert. Posture, awareness. Yeah, I'll, I'm looking around. When put them in the flight, I'm looking around. Mm. I don't, it's nice to leave them in the flight for a week. You can mm. even feed and water them in the flight. So, so long as they're in that flight and looking around, and they can see where they are. Nine times out of ten, that you'll get them back. Mm -hmm. uh, but the ones that are sitting up like that, you have to watch when they do come out, that they don't just whoosh. whoosh yeah. There's a lot of energy, isn't it? That? Uh, so that does a sign of activity. Yeah, 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 yeah. And that's what, really, they don't know what they're doing. Mm. That's why I always say, if a young one, they'll, they'll fly just in front of it, especially on a nice day. Yes, yes, yes. yes. So, uh, so when do you actually begin, after you've been them off and whatnot, so when do you actually uh, begin training them? You start looking ready on the wing. Right, right. When they drop one at eight weeks old, they should be out. Right, right, right. If you, if you, if, I mean, you've got to be keen and know one or two things about them. But, but the early sign is when they've dropped one. Don't plenty of them to have out. Hmm. Yeah. yeah. Otherwise, you have them out before they can fly. Put them out straight away. Hmm. And they, they shouldn't come. Then they ain't got the they ain't got the blooming energy to get going. They? No, no, no. The, That's that, why that, they like to lift, yeah. um, you slog, like, say through the belly, it's to the brain. To the brain, absolutely. So uh, keep them. Don't get too much cool. Mm -hmm. Enough. Two teaspoons is enough. Right, right. So oh, obviously half an ounce. Half an ounce. Instead of an ounce. A measure. <laughs> <laughs> a measure. Yes. A measure is an ounce. Yes. So, uh, how, how would you know and how do you know that uh, when your tipplers are in form? Down in feathers are coming out. Mm -hmm. Little white down in feathers. Right, and that's your indication? Uh, that's a good indication. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, uh, look, a lot of fences have different preferences. And uh, now, which would you rather fly in the competition? Hands? Cox or a mixture, a mix of both. Doesn't matter. It really doesn't. It doesn't matter. I find a good kit of ends. The the ends are well kit, nice and tight. Mm -hmm. You fly the cox and they'll slap happy all day. One here, one there. But as long as you can see them in the air, whatever. Well, it don't take an hour to find a pigeon. If he's got for nearly an hour, there's somewhat wrong. Obviously. Obviously. Uh, <laughs> now the ends. I was. The one that was up the top here talking to somebody and it was dark. Hmm. My flipping little buggers nearly landed on the top shed. Ah. So I said, come on away, come on away, get down, get down the garden. 
Okay, quiet. Completely ends the land up here. There. Right. But that's that's through pegging them in the box, getting them bonded to you. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. And so, I mean, obviously you mentioned dark training, the dark, or getting them into dark. Now, do you train uh, to or into dark? What's uh, what's what, what is your method of uh, dark training? Well, if there are any youngsters and you fire them out in the daytime, and they're a bit naff, turn them out again until the street lights come on. And then put your shed lights on. And then get them down. And then if you want to, keep them on the floor with the lights on and play them on the shed. Right, with, the, with the droppers then? With the droppers, obviously. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, sometimes I used to bring them up here. Up to the top of the house here, in the dark, and just loose them. I can only sit sound the ship, loose them. And then it's up to me when I get them down. The week before, long day, Sunday, three o'clock in the afternoon, midnight. Wednesday always was my last flight. Some people do Tuesday, give them extra days rest. Mm -hmm. Put them up at three o'clock. Clock like me. It dropped till three o'clock on Thursday. Right. I had got a feed of book for Sunday. Yeah. It took to bed Sunday and I only did 20 hours. I was expecting more. Mm. But that was me. Right. Not the pigeons. No, no one no. would blame the pigeons. No. It could be you. Brilliant. And uh, you know, uh, in terms of uh, obviously in the racing world, they use uh, an artificial means uh, in the loft to affect the flight feather mold. On the rails. I've never done it. I'll let them do it natural. Right, because that's, that's what that, I fly yeah. them natural. Right, right. I'll, right. I'll, I had used to get three pieces of board on the, for the last two or three days. Put the board up so I was arrested. Yeah. But never to introduce the malt. Right. I would rather fly them natural. Right. Not on this dark system. No, but yeah. I mean, some of the obviously these practices are. They do say only throw the flights out. Yeah. But they still got all the body feathers. Of course they do. Yeah. 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 I like them too. I like it natural. Hmm. No, I can, I, can, I can imagine that. Yeah, I think that's the general consensus. But a lot of people will die of them. Right. Okay. So I was throw all the flights. Right. Right. Yeah, right. but they still got all the body left. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yeah, might be so. So you upset the natural of the mountain. Mm -hmm. Straight away. I love natural flying anyway. So it, everybody's yeah, it's to everybody's choice. Yeah, yeah. Each to their own course, yeah. That's right. Absolutely. Each to their own. Yeah. So uh so uh, what I mean, what's your system of dropping? I mean what type of droppers do you keep and why do you keep that type of droppers? Well if uh, everybody got white ones, mm -hmm. I would change my kit to yellow ones. And then when everybody has yellow ones, I'll go back to the white ones. I can, I can, I can everybody's got white droppers. Yes. Everything's the same. Of course it is. That's the old pigeons could go down there. Yes, especially so this is Tipper the country where you are. Well, it was. Was. I mean, was. Yeah. There was state yeah. over thirteen members there. Right. And there was that's a lot. Oh, of the Bentley. Hmm. We also have more than that in the club. Yeah. yeah I think now we've got the biggest club in England is uh, Central Brown. Yes. It's getting there. Yeah, it's but it's we're it's 14 members last year. Right, right. Yeah. yeah. And no, but these are these, I mean, when you're looking at I and mean, when you're talking about back then, people were serious liars. They were serious liars. Oh, yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. It, it's only that thing that's sporting. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Yes, it has a lot of people back up. Yeah, there's rising people packing in now because of. Same thing. Yeah. yeah. It's just that every time they, they lost, the losses are humongous. Yeah, they are now. Yeah, they are. So, I mean, yeah, I've had a similar issue. If I, if I lose a pigeon, I lose it. If I see the orc have it, I'll put it down to the orc. If I don't see it happen, I've lost it. Right, 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 right. Because right. a lot of people blame the orc. Oh, uh, yeah, 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 I think, but that, that's. Uh, but if they don't see it happen. You can't, you can't, you don't know what's happened to it. You can't know what's happened to it. Anyway. And what sort of, what type of, uh, what breed of droppers do you keep? Anything white? Anything. Or Tumbler, I used to have a kick of muffies dropping on at one time. Yeah, yeah. a lot yeah. of people have muffies, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah but they good enough now. Mm. I mean, you ain't got to keep the feet clean. I mean, if they're playing late, it's, 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 it's the muffies, they get dirty, the wolves. 
Mm. I used to have to cut, cut them off to breed, otherwise the wolves could actually kill the youngsters. Yeah. Yeah. So I used to cut through. Right, 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 right. That's a good idea. Good but idea. Um, any dropper that I'll play, which some won't play even if they're hungry. Mm. Yeah, yeah, so you've got to be very selective in that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, now, uh, in terms of, uh, uh, you know, uh, your feed up, your feed for your flyers now, what determines your selection of grains and seeds yeah. used? What really is it, It's got to be nice clean. Right. Don't, clean food and clean water is the main thing. Now, they all about feeding them all. You just do a lot of rice in Right. And build. Hmm. Right. Saltamax or whatever you want to use. I always start with the weakest seed, wheat barley. Mm. Bit of best stuff around off with seed. Yeah, it's simple. Just building them. Yeah. Right. So the method would be that obviously, look, uh, every flight has his method and they no, would not like to share it. But I mean, I, I wouldn't ask you to do that. That's not the question here. Or what, what I'm asking. And a, a, so. a bit of tonic. Iron tonic, iron tonic, yeah. Or uh, glucose powder. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Electrolyte now there's a good one. Yeah, yeah. as a, well, don't use them. Yeah. No need to. It's uh, a tonic if it's a tonic for a child is good enough. For a baby. For a baby. Yeah. 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 Not too strong. Yeah. So when do you actually when does your feed up start? When do you actually start before the competition? To build when, up Wednesday up. say, three day build up, round off with seed on Saturday. Right. Yeah. But there's obviously, prior to that, there's training going on. Well, well the training going on, well, a lot of people use depurity. Yeah, yeah. I've never used it before with depurity. If I sit breeding breed away now, get me on. Right. White and red dye and add wheat barley to it. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. It's a depurity. It is, it is. Yeah. yeah. And how would you care for the birds after they fly, after they've been up for, uh, on the wings? And uh, let's just say on the competition day they've come back, or after training? When you're running them, building them up, how would you uh, care for them after they come back? On a fly day? Yeah. Well, just leave them to rest for a half hour or so and then give some biscuit. Right. If, they, if they're late. But <coughs> it, it, it's one of them, you either give them too much and they throw them. Mm -hmm. It's best to give them a bit of seed, really, to yeah. be the best school. Because, I mean, some daft people are podgeable. I don't know what. Lose them out. Mm -hmm. And they go on the roof, throw up, and then they fly all day. It's too late, you know. <laughs> Too few. <shit. laughs> That's all I said. Yeah. So um, you mentioned that these lots have been there since 1978. So how big, how big are the lofts? And uh, what, what is your uh, loft management system? How do you actually manage the whole space? And uh, within that, if I, can, if I may, I can throw a few, few more in there. Uh, so what's the total number of pigeons that you would house, you know? And no more than 50. No more than 50. And it's a 24 foot shed. Yes. So I'll we'll keep 12 in stock. Mm -hmm. And there's roughly about 20 droppers. Yeah, yeah. And if I've got 20 young birds, that'll do, man. That'll do. Yeah. yeah. And I clean out three times a week. Right. Pigeons in a box up, get done every other day. Mm -hmm. Put them in the flight. Well, they'll just stock. And they eat many, they still need a flight. Mm. So I still put a bath in for them. Mm. The same on with the other little flight that I fly out of. Yeah, There's right. a bath in there now. Yeah, I can see that I saw yeah. that as we came in, yeah. yeah. Well, it helps because they're molting. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I've never had much trouble. Like I said, I only had a bit of trouble in 2000 with them. I had mm. one or two died fetching a pigeon back that had been in somebody's shed a week, a youngster. Right. Uh, you've you've mentioned that you know you never you never inoculated you never jabbed the birds that's all no never ever no yeah because I never ever get anything in. absolutely well, so it's it's catched if it's, got, if it's got an NTU ring on I do try and find out I had one reported I had fetch it a 2014 bird mm -hmm. uh, fell and packed it so but he didn't give him much in went in a box. Thank you, Right, yeah. <laughs> right, now moving on to like, you know, breeding. I mean, um, <clears throat> you mentioned that you would probably, uh, what would you do about 
six six pairs. So seven you mentioned. You keep seven. Seven this seven year. Seven pairs. Six is plenty. Six is plenty. If you have three rounds, you can get thirty birds without knocking them about, and then part them. Right. And part them for nearly six months in it. Mm -hmm. September, October, November, December, January, pair up. Valentine's Day. Right. That was brilliant. Really, really. Oh, <laughs> yeah, I like to be in that loft on that day. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, you know, uh, in terms of uh, now, what what's, what method do you use? I mean, uh, when you breed, I mean, is it uh, in family, family pairings, or best to best? What do you do? Oh, always pair best to best. But right. now they're getting that close. So, oh, they family to family, the way I'm going on. Right. I, I have always paired best to best. Right. So, okay. And they always sign. Stick it up your ass. <laughs> 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 so, how close is too close in your breeding program then? Half oh, brother, half oh, sister. That's too close. Well, right. But it, it'll come to that. Yeah. But what do you? But it's, it's still not like any like line breeding, any like your mother and right. whatever. So, would but you? I'm, I'm getting close now. Right. But right. I do prefer best to best. Best to best. Brilliant. Brilliant. And uh, what do you feed your breeders? I mean, does the diet change during the winter months or seasonal? Oh, no, certainly. They don't right. get best corn in the winter. They don't right. get nothing sitting there. Right, yeah. Get your wheat and barley and spread yourself. Right, fair enough. I mean, so just get them ticket. Out. Yeah. So what, 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 what brand or do you make you buy your own separate season, make it according to uh, your ratio or what, what products well, do you in use? In the past I have uh, jars and jars. Diff diff yeah. Wheat. Uh, See, white meat, yeah. plank in here, they red, black, red, nah, no nah more. Keep it plain and simple. Mm -hmm. You can buy a quarter pound of everything. Yeah. And just mix it. Mix it, so. yeah. 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 I tend to do that, I've got a conditioner I make. Yeah, yeah make it own. Yeah. It's you can go buy Anna's eat from anywhere. It costs me about it 40 quid. Red button. Yeah. yeah, yeah, you can make your own. It costs me about 40 quid. But at least I know exactly. Wait. Well, 40 quid, I'll spend 3 quid and it'll last me the flying season. <laughs> Absolutely, so I make, I make about four, uh, 38, 28. You don't 28, them every day, they'll get used to it. Yeah. And then when you try to build them up, they're only getting the same as what they've been having all. Yeah. So there won't be any, so what you're so saying, so nutritional benefit. Boost. Yeah, so there won't be any traditional benefit. Uh, nutritional. You're not building them up. Really? Yeah, I'm just giving them the sound as what they've always had. Absolutely. So that's a, that's a very crucial point, guys. If you, like, just what Jim just said, that look, if, if the bot gets used to that particular seed and the nutrients, it gets. So yeah. the whole idea of that feed up is to boost. Yeah. You know, to build them up, to actually to boost them. No, well, that's what it is, to build them. Exactly. So if they are, so there's actually, so if you're not already boosting. on it. You're not going to. Exactly. <laughs> spot on, exactly. Sir. Spot on, spot on, absolutely spot on. Right. Now, uh, uh, in, in, you know, I know it's difficult, but what is your favourite tipler strain and why is it your favourite tipler strain? Well, I've, I've, been, I've been to Jack's, obviously. Yeah. And I've, Jack, I've been to Jack's and I've been to all the muses. Jack's seem a bit big for me. Gordon Hughes are a little bit thin. Mm. I mean, well, I have seen them no bigger than a starling, no fatter than a starling. Mm -hmm. As one of my friends when you're going to say, I'll tell you. My love it's nice head, short beak, short in the leg. It's in between the both. Mm -hmm. And the feathers of those are nice and blue. That's all they do, all they have. Right. How friggin' are you gonna go? Sure. So, well, I know he's a nice old man, he keeps saying, hold over. Oh, I don't think he'd tell anybody a lie. He kept them in the cupboard, either side of the fireplace, mm -hmm. through the wall, when you shouldn't be keeping pigeons. So, as a racing pigeon, I've come home with the messages. There was no, uh -huh. Yeah. So, everybody had to get rid of the birds. And he fed them on toast and oatmeal or whatever he could get and he kept them through. Them. So a lot a lot a lot of love it. I suppose everybody did the same mm. when the couple of us were through the wall. But yeah, a lot of love it and I've stuck to them ever since. They're all fly. 
Yeah, yeah. If you can get it out of them, and you know what you're doing, well, it's like the Times. Mm. I mean, they had all of the Times in the records. Mm. The Jack Bowden's, yeah. the Hughes's, yeah. and the old, all the older Olden's, Meredith's, and that's... Yeah, no, I've got some. I think uh, it was 1957, uh, 19, I was 42, yeah. and then it was 1959, then 20 hours then, and uh, then if you go, and these are the old birds, by the way. Yeah, old birds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And in 1961, uh, we've had uh, 70 and a half hours. Uh, so, really, when you think about it, we we gone that far in front. Yeah. There's only one or two people that have done more than 20 hours. Mm -hmm. 22, isn't it? Now? Yeah, 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 yeah. This must have been ex exceptional then. It is, it is, it is, it is definitely. He's got more to it. Hmm. Yeah. So, uh, Jim, uh, any suggestions that uh, you think that could improve the tip of sport? Well, as it is, it, it, it isn't too bad. It, it, it's just the odd few that spoil it, really. I mean, it's been a lovely sport without the org. I mean, fantastic. We, I think we had the best 70s, 80s, 90s, up to 2000. After that, it's just... If people was to just be honest with themselves, you know, I mean, they say they've done this and they've done that, and some you can believe, some you can hardly believe. If they was to follow the rules, and they done it right, there'd be no arguments, would there? No. Nah. It's just... What a two that tried to bend them to suit themselves. Mm. Oh, yeah. But you know, they don't need improvement. It's all right as it is, or well, it has been, put it that way. Mm. I mean, there has been some good honest people there, some good old flyers that were cheaty for. The, well, what's the use of cheaty for a three pound week in trail fee? Mm. That's right. Might as well go and buy one and have a put up. Uh, uh, sometimes some people are help and others won't. It's just animosity sometimes that spoils it. That's all. Plenty of that, that. Uh, yeah. That's, that's all it is. Just keep it plain and simple. Do what you're supposed to. No, I think it's it. So, uh, what would be your top three tips from your experience with tipplers? Keep them lean, right. treat them mean, don't feed them, teach them what to do, not what they want to do. The pigeons I want about, not yes. people. No, no, no. <laughs> so discipline. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Keep them yeah. disciplined, keep them, yeah? Yeah, yeah. okay. Keep them clean. Important, isn't it? That's... Just keep the water and food clean, that's all. Mm. Don't chuck corn on the floor, onto milk, and then they'll go to pick it up and feed the youngsters. They're asking for trouble out there. Of course they are. Yeah, sure. Don't leave corn about. Mm. Barber's mice. Yeah. Pigeons get bad. Mm. You know, uh, you, you're just defeating the object. If you think you're going to fly, treating the birds like that, you don't have a freaking chance. Right. Now, sincerely, your message for the novice now. Just to wrap things up here. If you're going to start up, look round, pick the type of pigeon you like, get your shed ready first, the loft, and then go buy what you like and what you're going to enjoy. And I was saying, these are the best black outside, blue badges, but if you like them, have them. It's in there, pigeons will fly, you just have to get any set. Mm. And when you're, when you're training, half a measure. Half a measure. When you're building them up, give them the herbs. They'll feed them the same, but that extra core, boost them up. A couple of days rest, they'll do. Sometimes they'll fly just by resting. Yeah. Yeah. Right, Jim, uh, listen, uh, that sums it up here. Uh, yes. uh, you know, thank you very much for having us here today. That's it's been an honour. Welcome.
and uh, you know, uh, honestly, the Bears are a credit to you. <clears throat> and I've seen them, and uh, they were beyond expectation. It's the first time I've seen you, Bears. So uh, beyond expectation, I but really no, love them. That's exactly what I say to the novice. Mm. You've never seen them. You think they're great now? Well, that's what you've got to do. You've got to go out and have a look, mm. see what you like, and then start flying. Right. Right. So thank you very much, sir. So it's goodbye from uh, me, and it's uh, goodbye from him. I see.